two o'clock on the dot here uh, in Eastern time. So we're going to go to go ahead and get started. So welcome, everyone. I really appreciate you hopping on our uh, webinar today. And today we're discussing a very exciting topic, a uh, topic that is near and dear to a lot of event coordinators, uh, event managers, event directors, close to your hearts, um, and on-site event management tips and strategies. So before I get started with the webinar today, I want to go ahead and give you a couple of house notes. Uh, we are recording this webinar, so I will send you a copy of the recording itself, as well as a copy of the slides and a follow-up email after we complete today's session. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Uh, the easiest option for me to track is that Q&A option that you see on your Zoom screen at the bottom. Easiest way for me to track all of your questions uh, you can use the chat, uh, but I generally advise the, we use chat for general discussions about the presentation and then the Q&A option, because sometimes when you have a lot of people talking about what's going on, questions can get lost in there. So Q&A is the best section for that. And if you have any highlights or takeaways that you would like to share from today's webinar, please follow us on your favorite social media channel. We're on all of the major social platforms. Uh, for those that are unfamiliar with QDev, welcome. Uh, we are an online fundraising platform. We have fundraising solutions for all size nonprofits, including year-round fundraising tools, text giving, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, and auction tools. You are at the center of everything we do, and our goal is to make fundraising as easy as possible so you can raise more money online. And if you're interested in learning more, or you want to check out any of our other resources or our blog articles as well, they're all free for you. They're at www.qgive.com. Uh, a little bit about myself. My name is Justin Cook. I am the Director of Demand Generation here at QGIV. I've been with QGIV for over four years and I am almost at the five-year mark. It'll be five years in November. And I have been a marketing professional for over seven and I'm getting really close to my eight-year mark as well. Time sure does fly when you're having fun. And that's because I love what I do. Digital marketing and optimizing the user journey are my areas of expertise, which just is a fancy way of me saying that I try to make, make your life as easy as possible when you're looking to download resources or looking to learn more about all of the tools that QGIV has to offer on our website. I also have uh, three animals. I have one dog and two cats. They are the reason why I exclusively present from the office now because they crash all of my meetings and all of my webinars. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hello, everyone talking in the chat. Thanks for jumping in today. So as I was mentioning a little bit earlier, uh, we did cover a, uh, a webinar specifically on some of the tools that you can utilize to help solve some of these common event challenges that you're seeing on our screen right now. And so today, we're going to dive deeper on two major aspects of your event which is managing those on-site logistics, as well as how you can keep organized with everything going on at your event. Oftentimes, when you're running an event, it can feel like you're herding cats. And there's so many different elements going on that it can feel impossible to get everything organized and get everything moving in the right direction. If you ever dealt with cats before, you know they don't like listening to what you want them to do. So what we're going to do today is we're gonna take you from looking like this to looking like this, a Zen master. So we're gonna talk about how you can create the best event experience for your attendees, how to prepare your volunteers to be successful, how to delight and recognize your sponsors, how to plan for and mitigate any potential risks for your onsite event. And we'll also dive into some of QGIVS event management tools that can help you do this for everything that we talk about today. And so the main focus of today is that I want to provide you with an overview of things that you need to be thinking about for your event, for each group of those attendee, the audiences that you're working with, your attendees, your volunteers, and your sponsors. You'll notice that throughout the webinar that most of the things that you need to do to manage your event is planning and implementing the right tools to make sure that your event runs smoothly. So we'll start by covering the planning stage right before your event at a high level. I'll provide you tips on how tools can help you along the way. Then we'll discuss briefly about the day of your event and how you can improve on site. If you are interested in learning more about event management, 
I suggest downloading our newly released Ultimate Events Guide, which I will later link into the presentation as well as include in our follow-up email as well. So let's go ahead and set the stage for the next few sections that we're gonna be talking about. When I say before your event, this is about one to two weeks before, and we'll cover specific things you can do uh, for each audience as, we, as I said. At this point in your event journey, you should have already figured out the key components of your event, like finding a venue, securing your sponsorship, picking vendors and entertainment, sending out a call to sponsors, and so on and so forth. So here we're in crunch time. We're right before our event. I did cover some of the other information that's before your event, how to market to them, uh, promote it, get more attendees on site, which uh, is all online on, our, on the QGIV website. So we're picking up at that crunch time. These are the final things that you need to cross off before the big day. And the first thing that we're gonna start with is a checklist. And I absolutely love a good checklist because it helps me identify what I might have missed or overlooked. Being a director, I have a couple of different people that report to me. I have my own projects that are going on and I have dotted lines to other people that I need to manage as well and all of the projects that they do. So keeping a good checklist to keep me in balance with all of the tasks and things that I need to understand and make sure are moving in the right direction is life-saving. And as an event coordinator, you have the similar things on your plate and you need to decide what still needs to be delegated and the things that you need to check on right before your event. And that first thing is your volunteers, your entertainment and your vendor coordination. You're most likely already heavily involved in this process, but this is merely about crossing your T's and dotting your I's. Um, for example, when are they arriving? What time do you expect them to show up to get their staff there to start getting set up? When should they start warming up the food uh, for your volunteers? When should they show up and start working their different sections of your event? And making sure that they understand where they need to go. So for example, with any vendors or entertainment, where are the outlets to plug into? What, what's the Wi-Fi information so that they can get tagged in and they can start working and uh, doing their job for your event, as well as educating your volunteers, right? And we'll dive into that a little bit later on in the webinar itself. What, as we get closer to the event as well, we need to start looking at our technology that needs to be implemented. So we're preparing for a test run, right? We wanna make sure our Wi-Fi is set up we wanna make sure that all of our laptops and all of our event apps are downloaded that we need to manage our event. So we wanna start getting these things prepped on site so that we can do a test run. And within that, we're following the same theme. We're getting our sponsorship signage up in the venue for a walkthrough. Uh, we're trying to get that set up complete so that we can have an accurate depiction of where everything is in our walkthrough and then we can adjust accordingly. Another thing to think through is those other benefits that you provide your sponsors for the event. So are, do you have any tables that are dedicated specifically to sponsors? Are they properly marked so that no one sits in those, ta those seats or at that table? And making sure that you think of any other placements for their logos that you have promised in your benefits. And then finally, looking at your event layout. And one of the easiest ways to sort of craft your event layout is in a virtual is in a virtual setting. And you want to craft this in a way that keeps the room moving and has visual interest to everyone that is attending. So one thing you wanna make sure that it's easy to get in and out. And planners should think about popular stations that are placed strategically and strategically put any asks for additional donations or items on the path to those stations. So a great example, Put the bar in the far corner of the room and have the auction item table on that path so that folks see it when they walk by. They may not stop initially, but they will know it exists and it will increase the likelihood they come back later. So all of these things, you're creating an on-site checklist, you you're getting things set up, and these are things that we're setting up for the eventual walkthrough that we're going to do later. And before your guests arrive, so we're getting really close into that time, this one to two time frame, 
I recommend always, and I, oh, I'm bringing this back up. This is in our how, like communication section that we have, but I love to bring this back up because it's really important to make sure that your attendees and your volunteers and your sponsors understand what's going on. They need to know the flow of your event that's, that it is. And, for, and one of the major things that you wanna do is get all of your attendees checked in quickly. So for example, you need to send them important updates leading up to your event about parking instructions that check-in information, what they need to do to get in quickly. And you also wanna post these on your event site and your social media as well. So what can you do to help streamline the process for your everyone that's coming through your event? How can you get them checked in quickly? Things to think about. A, a tip for this is to provide an incentive for anyone that's checking in early. So can you provide them an extra raffle ticket? Can you provide them a free drink? Anything to help speed up that process will help out wonderfully and providing that extra incentive for coming in early will help you streamline those lines. And finally, one major tip that I have is when you do send these out, especially through email, you will be able to monitor everyone who's opened, who's clicked, and who has taken the action that you need them to take with those emails. So if that's downloading parking instructions and the layout of the event, or whatever your main call to action is for your registrants to do, your email platform should be able to track all of these. And so my tip is to track everything that they're doing with your email sends and create a specific segmented list for any registrants that have not taken that action. Because you're gonna to wanna to send it again to them three days before your event. And if they still haven't taken an action, you're gonna to wanna to send it the day of as well. I know it sounds like a bit of a, uh, you know, you're sending a lot of communications, but it's really important that they understand how they can get checked into your event and where they need to go. So that's a pro tip to think about how you segment those lists. So now let's move on to looking at specific audiences. And the first audience that we're gonna look at is the attendee experience. So they are the largest number of people that are going to be attending your event. So taking a look at how to provide the optimal experience for them is very crucial. What touch points could have a negative experience? What touch points can we use to enhance their experience? These are all important things to think about as we drive new registrants and we look to cultivate our recurring registrants. Remember, we want to continue to drive uh, people to our events year over year, especially when it's an annual event. So providing key touch points throughout the process to create positive experiences and reduce the overall number of negative experiences will continue to get registrants coming back year after year to our events, which only builds momentum and steam for our future events and more fundraising dollars for your organization. So the first step to understand with this experience is to understand what your attendees expect from you. And I know that the flashy stuff may be the great are great and they create an engaging experience for your attendees. But if you don't do the basic things right, it doesn't matter. Your attendees will be so annoyed or upset that it's hard to change their opinion about your event. While both are very important, we need to understand the basics so that we don't lose our attendees. So what are those things that uh, attendees expect at all type of events that you host, whether it's a movie night or an auction, or if you're doing a peer to peer event, what do they expect? They expect short lines. I don't know if anybody here on the call likes to wait a long period of time, but people will actually pay not to wait. And you see that in all types of different things. So think about how your layout is fitting in, how you're getting people checked in quickly, how you're getting them checked out quickly, uh, other important things like the bathroom, food, drinks, any activities. You wanna make sure that all of these have optimized lines and that they're not moving into the space of your walking in your venue. You wanna make sure that all of your attendees have freedom to move around the venue with plenty of space to sit down and feel comfortable si sitting down at their table and seeing the main stage that you have for your event. So one of the things with the short lines and the freedom of space is optimizing where everything is and ensuring that lines don't collide together, which we'll talk about a little bit later, uh, and they don't go into like main viewable areas like the main stage. What else do they expect? An inviting and engaging experience. You wanna be inclusive. You wanna make sure that everyone is enjoying the event itself. You wanna make sure that you're tailoring your experience to maybe those that are disabled, hard of hearing, 
Uh, they have specific food allergies. So make sure that you're inviting them into the experience and creating an inclusive, but also engaging experience. What other things are you doing to engage them on site? Uh, mini games, uh, raffle tickets, uh, the auction side of things where they can uh, bid on the items themselves. So how are you creating an engaging experience in entertainment as well? Big things to think about. And information about your mission and campaigns. So they're there to support you. They want an update on how things are going at your organization. What have you accomplished for with their support to your organization? So make sure that you do cover that. And while this is not an exhaustive list, and it really does depend on the specific event type that you have. For example, if you have an auction, uh, easy ways to bid and claim items uh, for uh, race events, like peer-to-peer -peer events, where the check-in for the race and that your attendees want to track their progress during that race. So there's a couple of different things to think about based on your event type, but these are basic things for all event types that you should be thinking about. So let's dive into these a little bit more detailed um, based on the event yourself. So optimizing your layout. Uh, so as the saying goes, no plan survives first contact. So there are always going to be things that you don't think about or plan for. It's, it's inevitable. But you can start by creating a virtual layout of your event venue and then actually putting it to the test. So important things to think about when you are planning and testing your layout uh, create a virtual layout, like I mentioned earlier, and add tables and seats, food, drink stands, uh, sponsorship banners, uh, important staff areas like check-in and check-out, and try to recreate the room itself with pillars or columns. So what you're looking for in your walkthrough are where are your blind spots? Um, and making sure that when you're doing this through your walkthrough, that your staff and volunteers test that that layout. And we'll dive into what a walkthrough looks like a little bit later, but make sure that you're thinking about these things and get other staff involved. The more the merrier, it makes it a lot easier to identify some of these issues that we that could pop up. Um, and through this walkthrough, what does the flow of traffic look like? Are people bottlenecking in a certain area? Where are the crowded areas? Is it around food and, and beverages, which it probably is? Is there a long line uh, or a game or activity that is disturbing the flow of traffic? Are there wires and cords in the way that people can trip over and potentially damage any technology? And things to think about here is that fundraising tools like QGIVE can really help you create these types of virtual layouts so that you can start working on these different optimizations. For example, at QGIVE, we have tools for table and seating management that you can create that virtual layout and identify any ways to optimize the flow of your event, as well as assign your attendees and sponsors to specific tables as well. So then let's talk about lines. So lines are a big thing. And in a perfect scenario, you don't have any lines that are overlapping in the venue itself, like we talked about previously with optimizing your layout, like food and beverage running into each other, or if you have other key components where the lines are getting into the stage view, or you just have tables that are clashing together. So we want to think about ways on how we can help reduce that line size. So the first one is using some type of check technology. So check in and check out. Uh, your attending management apps will help you to quickly search for and find any attendee to check them into your event and manage any of their pending purchases um, and quickly check them out if you do have a checkout component as well. So if they've purchased any items through the event and you're putting it on the app itself, you can actually see all that information and then check them out right as they're leaving the event itself. So using technology will help you streamline those events uh, like credit card readers, right? There's multiple different kinds out there that you can use that you can utilize to accept that card on site. So uh, cash is great and it, it provides an easy exchange. The only problem is counting and getting the, the coins back to them, right? So in a perfect scenario, you have the ability to quickly accept those credit cards on site and that will streamline uh, any of your lines that you have. Uh, coordinating with vendors as well. So you want to make sure that they are properly informed with how many people you're expecting so that they can properly staff themselves and have enough, one, to have enough food and drinks on hand, but two, to help coordinate with the number of staff that's gonna be there that will streamline your lines as well. If people are waiting because there's a bottleneck at the food and beverage, it's gonna cause a backup and it could potentially run into other areas of your event. 
And something that you can do to help with this is to look to cross-train your staff and volunteers as well. So on the vendor side, they'll take care of that. But what about check-in and check-out? What about helping run other areas of your event specifically? If you cross-train your, uh, your staff and volunteers, they'll have their main set of responsibilities. But think about what happens if something's getting really backed up and it's causing a problem. Make sure that you have someone on hand to help you to, whoops, uh, to help you get into those other activities to help streamline the process for you. And one thing I do want to note is that sometimes are just sometimes lines are just going to be unavoidable. So if there's an activity in place of the area of the line, uh, so if they can play a mini game while they're sitting there in a line, or perhaps you can look at some signage to include to educate your attendees about your mission or any of your sponsorships or beneficiaries that you have for your event. So there's only so much that you can do. So if there is going to be a bottleneck, think of some other clever ways to get them involved so that they're not thinking about the, the, line, the weight that they have, that they're actually engaging around. Um, there's only so much you can do, but having those signs and champagne, maybe champagne passes as well, will help people to you know, forget about the line. It'll be a nice touch for them. And while optimizing lines can be difficult, uh, that's where your fundraising tools can really help you out. So fundraising platforms that have that check-in and check-out functionality can help you quickly search, check-in, check-out, and add purchases or donations uh, through their platform. QGIVE is a great example of this as we have a virtual terminal that can be accessed by a laptop. Um, and we also have a mobile virtual terminal, which can be a, a used by a phone through a downloaded app. And additionally, we have those card readers that I was talking about earlier, so you can quickly accept those purchases or those donations on site, which all of these get mapped back to your attendee and your platform, so you can see all of the purchases that they have. And thank you, Amy, for that uh, tip here. She says, volunteers as line gestures are a huge help as well. Thank you for that tip. So the final piece of this puzzle is that atmosphere. So We've optimized our lines. We've cleverly thought about our event layout. So now we need to craft that atmosphere that's going to create an engaging experience that's inclusive to all of our attendees and provides a positive experience to everyone. So the first thing in this, and it sounds crazy, but be mindful of noise. What is the noise level at? Test your speakers and your volume during your walkthrough that you have. Is it blowing out the ears of your people in the front? And can people in the back hear it? So make sure that you find the balance so that everyone can properly hear what's going on. You want to do a check for your Wi-Fi and your power to make sure that everything is working appropriately. You'll want to determine your run of the show, which I'll dive into in a minute. Having all of your contingency plans ready uh, and in place to make sure that you minimize any of those negative experiences, which again, we'll talk about a little bit later. And be inclusive, you know, be mindful of the accessibility and the dietary needs of your audiences. Things to think through, sign language interpreters, uh, wheelchair and walker accessibility, any allergens and other food or beverage related needs that you have, alcohol-free options, the list goes on and on. And again, it's not an, an exhaustive list, but those are things that you want to make sure that everyone has a positive experience and you need to think about that inclusivity that you have. And make sure that you do highlight uh, your fundraising efforts like you would with a fundraising thermometer. And all of this will then be tested through your event walkthrough. So during that event walkthrough, what you're gonna do is you're gonna pretend to be an attendee, walk through the event venue, sit in the seats, and look for any of those trouble areas where there's blind spots or people can't hear, or you're having trouble getting to a specific area within your event. I would also encourage you to enlist your staff and your volunteers to help do this because the more that you have, the more potential issues will pop up and that you can address while you're there. You want everyone to have an enjoyable experience. So make sure that you do this very well and you can re-optimize your layout and the overall experience if you identify any issues. So what are we doing during the walkthrough? We're gonna test our technology. Is everything connected to Wi-Fi? Are there any troubles? Is it dropping? Are we having low connection issues? Can people find check-in very quickly? And can we get them through check-in quickly? How are you accepting credit cards? Is that a quick process as well? 
You'll want to run some test uh, scenarios with your uh, staff and your volunteers so that they know how to handle any of those potential problems that pop up. So what happens if you can't find someone at checkout? Do you have a backup plan for them to go to a secondary staff member and say, hey, we can't find you. Did you purchase a registration? Uh, if not, then we can get one here right here right now. And you can sort of keep that line moving while you have that backup. Other things to think about uh, unruly guests, it happens. Just something to think through. How should your staff handle those uh, and what should they be doing there? Uh, as well as making sure that any of your credit card devices are properly working. And if they're not working, what's your backup plan? And how do you get that moving quicker? And train your staff on those different scenarios. Um, if you didn't do a meeting with your volunteers before you did the walkthrough, the walkthrough is a great time to do this. So you can educate your volunteers on their main responsibilities. What, and what are the instructions that they need to be aware of? Where do they need to go? And if you have any special attire requirements that they have, make sure that you are letting them know during that walkthrough. Again, ensure that your staff members know what to do. They need to know their responsibilities. They need to know where they go. If they're managing a group of people, who are they managing? Who reports to who? Make sure that you have all of these worked out. And you'll also wanna run through other key onsite functions. So that check-in process, any food and beverages, like if people walking in to get food, if you have like a buffet table or if it's uh, going to be handed out, beverages, make sure to think about all these things. And a pro tip, meet with your vendors on site the day of your event or right the day before so they can understand the layout and the supplies that they need, especially, especially for your table, tent, or chair vendors and caterers that you have. They just, they need to know the layout. They need to know how many people you're expecting. And they also need to know where all of your outlets are and if they need any uh, extension cords or anything like that. And finally, you're looking at a run of the show. So what do I mean by a run of the show? Uh, it is a full walkthrough of timing within the agenda that you have. The, this basically is the way that you uh, run through the event. You'll have one person that speaks everything out loud uh, with the group and then solicit questions to make sure that everyone is uh, on the same page about what is going on and what needs to be accomplished. And this is also a great time if you're using fundraising tools to test them out. So like QGive, if your staff or volunteers are using some type of technology to do this, test them, make sure that they understand how it works. And if they don't, you can utilize, uh, if your platform provides it, QGIF provides unlimited training and support. We have an online help desk with thousands of articles on all the things that you're looking to do in our platform. And we even create specific downloadable resources and videos that are step-by-step -step guides to how to use different parts of our platform. It's not that it's confusing, it's just some people like to have that as a backup. So you can always check those out. We look to empower you, your staff, and your volunteers to use our platform. So let's move on to the next section. So volunteer experience. Similar to attendees, your volunteers also have expectations and they are a crucial part and an invaluable part of the success of your event that you have. So you want to make sure that you are taking care of them and you don't want to just take care of them for this event. Always think of your volunteers as people that are going to help you multiple times, whether it's at another event or if you have some type of other campaign or thing that you need them to do. If you keep providing value to your volunteers through all of the things that you do, this is a great place to showcase what they can expect from you. So what are some things that your volunteers expect from you at your events. Information is the first one. Clear information about what they are doing uh, among the other many things that you'll have them do. So who, some things to think about, who's responsible for using your fundraising tools. Um, ask your, if they can provide you with easy to understand instructions on how to use them. This will empower your volunteers and help you address any questions beforehand. And as I stated before, QGIF has that extensive library for you to use. Other things to think about, you know, where do they need to go? Who are they reporting to? Um, where do they need to park? So oftentimes there's a special area for volunteers to park outside of where the attendees are. How long is their shift? And then any other special details that you need them to know. Uh, some things also to think about are dedicated staff to answer questions. So this doesn't have to be everyone. Um, 
but they need to know who the leaders are of your organization so that if they do have any questions, they know who to ask. It also helps if volunteers have a full list of staff that are going to be on site at your event and what their duties are. And basically the only reason why this is really useful is because when you have a lot of staff running around, some people may not know the answer to the questions that your volunteers have. So if your volunteer has to go to one person, they say, oh, you need to talk to her. Then you go to her and he says, oh no, you gotta go talk to him. And they're doing this runabout trying to figure out what the answer is and they're being continuously redirected then there's an issue. So who are the specific leaders that they should be talking to uh, to answer all of their questions? And then obviously communication. If there's any changes that are relevant to what they are doing, you wanna make sure that you are communicating those changes clearly and effectively and as quickly as possible um, so that they know what's, what's going on for the event. And especially so if it affects anything that they do for their volunteering efforts with you. Uh, email is a fantastic way. It's probably one of the most popular ways to do this. Um, and if you do have the ability through your tool, fundraising tools or a text providing service, uh, texting is a very fast form of communication uh, with all of your volunteers. Uh, so to avoid a lot of confusion and questions when you get to your event, you should make sure that all of your volunteers know what they're doing. So looking at the duties that they have and some really helpful things that uh, I've personally experienced as a volunteer and what we've heard from other uh, volunteers that we've helped uh, is creating volunteer packets. So uh, this is based on an assigned duty, especially if you have multiple different areas in which they can be working. But in this packet, one of the basic things that you need to do is your venue layout, what are the parking instructions? Where do volunteers need to check in? What are their specific duties? And then any other important event details like the agenda and the run of the show as well. Um, and include any um, pertinent information that is a priority to their role, as well as any of those backup roles that they may also have as well. Some things that I found really useful as well is a specific volunteer meeting. So I mentioned this a bit in the walkthrough, but you can actually do a volunteer meeting before that walkthrough itself, specifically for volunteers. So one, they can put a name to the face of all the leaders that will be on site. And if they have any pertinent questions that they have from the packet, you're not waiting for them to get on site and then ask those questions. They can go ahead and ask them ahead of time. And then when they get to the walkthrough, you can focus on different scenarios and cross training instead of walking through all of the responsibilities that they have. And that, like I said, that meeting is very helpful um, and it will allow them to meet your staff. So let's move on to the sponsorship experience. Now, every audience that you have that is coming to your event is important, but you do wanna take care, extra care of your sponsors. And this isn't the same theme, it's because we want to continue to cultivate that relationship with them and provide them value from our event so that they continue to return being sponsors. And it's especially important for those new sponsors so that they can, uh, the new sponsors that we have so that they can, ex they know what to expect year after year coming to our events or sponsoring anything else that we have going on. First part of the sponsorship management is that they understand what you're providing them based on their contribution. And you can do this in a couple of different ways. So the first one is creating a sponsorship package uh, packet. So this clearly defines benefits, uh, including different sponsorship levels. So think through if they, you have like a bronze, silver, and gold, and a platinum, right? So that's a very basic level. Some really fun ideas can come out of brainstorming different uh, package ideas that you have uh, based on the theme of your event but make sure that you are providing different levels so that you're not only having one huge like sponsorship. Like there's other different um, benefits that they can get from smaller contributions as well. And obviously you wanna follow through with all of those benefits and definitely make special note of any of the major sponsors that's coming through, like if it's signage um, or an announcement on site, because you're gonna have to have some type of script that goes along with it. The signage, you're gonna have to create the, uh, the placement and then you have to order it and then get it shipped. So make sure that you are making special note and that you as the event coordinator have tasks to monitor everything so that nothing gets dropped and you have happy sponsors. I also highly recommend to do a sponsorship receipt 
with an itemized summary for their tax purposes. Really helpful for them. Um, and in that process, you can also customize that receipt and send a customized uh, thank you as well after their, uh, their, their purchase to the, the event itself. And I'd even suggest giving them a call to thank them personally. And another thing to do to think about when they're on site at your event, if they have some type of table at the event or they have um, attendees that are allowed to come because of the sponsorship that's included, make sure to find them and greet them on site and so that you can get to know them and you can cult start cultivating that relationship as well. So sponsorship package specifically. So we can dive into each of the things that we just talked about. And you'll see on the right side of um, the, the image here, this is actually from uh, QGIVs, QGIV conference coming up. We have a breakdown that's included in our packet as well. So obviously the first thing is information about your mission. What do you do? What services do you provide? How do you benefit your community and your beneficiaries? You know, they wanna know what you do and how you utilize the funds that they're giving you. What is your, also diving deeper into the event details. What is the theme of your event? What's your fundraising goal? And like this image to the right, what audience can they expect by attending your event? Make sure that you include any response deadlines and a specific contact that they can reach out to to talk about any of the sponsorships and if they don't wanna do any of the purchases online and they can specifically call you and you know they can send you a check, then they need to know who to send that to. And think through all of the, the sponsorship levels and what the associated benefits are. So maybe you have a basic package where you have bronze, where it includes a logo placement in several different places. You have silver, which includes maybe a banner at the event. And as you move up, you can get, you can add more benefits like the call out that I was mentioning earlier. Maybe they have a huge sign on the, at the event, you know, who is your dedicated sponsor for it? I do highly suggest uh, to get creative with them uh, with your different uh, themes, your event theme and um, creating different types of sponsorship levels based on that theme drives a lot, of, a lot of fun into the process itself. And make sure that you have an easy way for your sponsorships to actually purchase the uh, sponsorship itself. So one way that you can do this is create a form online so that they can use that. And if you are using QGIVE, we can actually help you with these sponsorship purchases as well. So we have our event registration forms and you can actually break your registration form into different sections so that registrants know exactly where they need to go. Your volunteers that are signing up for your event to volunteer, they know exactly where to go on your form. And then sponsorships, you can actually create that at the, like at the bottom or the top. It doesn't matter where the section is, but you can actually create sections so everyone knows where to look on your registration form. Now, if that's a lot and you don't wanna add all of that information to the same form as attendees that are registering, you can actually create a separate form that they can purchase through. So uh, we totally understand that. Don't wanna make your forms too long. So with QGIVE, you can actually create an unlimited number of forms or events in case you want to have a different form for your volunteer signups, your ticket purchases, and your sponsorships as well. As we move on, looking at the sponsorship benefits that you are providing, one of the most important things that you have to do is to deliver on those benefits. So make sure that you are building in ample time for any design, print, and delivery needs for your signage. So if you need to ship it off and you need to get it, get it back into your nonprofit before you put it at your event, make sure that you have ample time uh, that everything's getting built and you have proper placement for them all. The other part of this is your logo placements. So th there's many, many different ways in which you can place a sponsorship uh, logo within your event. So that can be in your email appeals when you send them out, on your event registration pages that you have, uh, any thank you emails that you send out, you can include them on the signage, so on and so forth. And what's really cool, if you are using fundraising tools, they can help you out a lot here. Lots of your event pages that you have in your builders you can create a specific sponsorship call out on your like homepage of it and create a specific sponsorship page within your tools as well so that you can highlight all of your sponsors. Another great thing with certain fundraising tools, so QGIVE allows you the ability to customize those event receipts you have as well. So these are all easy ways that are free 
to provide value to your sponsors. It costs you nothing when you're using like QGIVs tools with our, our starter packet of event registration tools, it's $0 a month. So it costs you nothing and it's a free way for you to provide value to your sponsors. Um, another thing that you can do is add, a, if you have a live display option through your fundraising tools, so you have a monitor and that everyone can monitor, um, see how much money you're raising and see uh, any activity that's coming through for donations. You can also put sponsorships as well. So lots of different ways to highlight your sponsors and your tools can really help you facilitate that process. Uh, when you are doing sponsorship announcements and any call outs, so if you have a script that you're gonna follow and you have it on your agenda on when someone needs to go up and read that script, make sure that your MC has a reminder for all of those important times, right? We don't want any of our sponsorships um, benefits falling through because that only causes issues on after the event itself. So make sure that you have those important times on your agenda and your MC has reminders as well. And of course, personally thank your sponsors at your event. You should have some type of VIP list and you should include them if you're doing uh, any meet and greets to make sure that any of your attending sponsors are included on that. And then afterwards, obviously, same cultivation strategies, send thank you emails, give them personal phone calls. Uh, if you can, you know, visit their business as well, give them a personal thank you. Now, no on-site event management planning is ever complete without the crisis management. And I really, really do hope that you won't experience any major issues or emergencies at your event. But if you do, it's always great to have a plan in place. So what are some common risks at our events? And there's no way to cover every disaster or eliminate all of the troubles that we might have. But we can uh, address some of these potential issues, make a categorization on whether they're a major issue or a minor issue, and then plan for each of these. Now, the difference between what I would consider a major issue versus a minor issue is uh, if it's event ending or if it's gonna cause a large group of our attendees to have a poor experience because of whatever that issue is. So what are those things? So event ending, if you don't have a backup, if you're doing an outside event and there's inclement weather, it's over, right? So make sure that you have an indoor venue or you have some type of tent that can handle any type of weather that can come your way. What happens if uh, your vendors or entertainment or your MC uh, is delayed, so they're 15 minutes late? What happens if they cancel altogether? Making sure that you have all of those backups. Uh, emergencies, so if someone has a medical emergency on site or you have a really unruly attendee that you need to, um, you need to leave, making sure that you have security as well as uh, alerting your local, um, your, I can't think of the name right now, your, your local hospital or um, fire rescue to make sure that they're aware that you have a plan, that you have an event going on. And so in case you need something, they can show up on site. Some of them might, if it's large enough, some of them might even be on site at the event itself. And what happens if you lose power? Do you have a backup generator? Uh, is there any way that you can connect into something else? So always make sure to think through all of these things. You're never gonna be able to mitigate all of them. Um, but you can have a backup plan in case something does happen. And here is where all of those checklists come back around. I love good checklists, they're wonderful, and we can create them so that we can um, identify our contingency plans for each of these. So as I talked about earlier, you need a backup plan for each of those things that we talked about, but that's not the only thing that you need to think about. So when you do create your contingency plans, make sure that you brainstorm those different scenarios. And then you also plan for your communications, who is sending what, what is the message that needs to go out? How are we doing all of these things? Um, make sure that all of your staff are aware of their assigned responsibilities based on those, uh, those uh, issues that arise. And then make sure that you have those alternatives um, so that you can identify backups on site. Ooh. So as I mentioned, we do have um, an ultimate event guide for you to download. So I will leave this up for a second. If you'd like to scan that QR code there at the uh, like middle, middle bottom of the screen there. The ultimate event guide has all of the information that we talked about for pre-event planning, event operations, and your post-event wrap-up. Um, it'll help you identify the objective of your event and your budget, how to recruit volunteers and secure sponsorships, 
checklists for you, which we all love, what you need to mitigate those potential disasters, and then also how to evaluate your event afterwards for continued success. So the last thing that I want to dive into, and by the way, if you missed the QR code, I'll include a link within our follow-up email as well. Just make sure that you know. The last thing that we need to do, so we've planned for everything. We've done all we can up to this point to make sure that we have everything accounted for. And now it's actually time for the day of the event. So as I was talking about at the beginning of the webinar, everything that you're doing for the day of your event is planning, right? And now all we need to do is make sure that we have everything uh, properly organized so that we can keep track of all of the things going on and we can activate all of those plans as necessary. So here are some really great uh, event planner tips from some of our uh, best cue givers here. Um, create a checklist of your to-dos and that event schedule to ensure that nothing gets missed. So we talked about before, and you want to make sure that all your sponsorship benefits are being um, put up. You want to make sure that you have a list of where your vendors are, what time they're showing up. Um, and another important thing to include in that is your, um, what are their phone numbers? What are phone numbers of your key event staff? So thinking through all of these different things, you also want to have a backup for any of the last minute supplies that you have. So you can have a volunteer dedicated to this or a staff member, but this goes along with what we were talking about earlier about having any of those secondary responsibilities that someone may have. Assign a volunteer or a staff member in case you run out of a supply or you just forgot something. It happens, it happens to the best of it. There's so much going on, it's understandable. One of the biggest tips that I heard from everyone was creating an event day binder to keep track of all of this information that you have. So all of those checklists, the event schedule, who's, who's assigned to what, but also your site map for your venue, specific vendor phone numbers, phone numbers for your key staff and volunteers, the run of the show, having extra copies of the program scripts on hand as well. Things happen, things get lost, water gets dropped on them, things happen, make sure that you have backups of them. Um, and make sure that all of those sponsorship amenities are accounted for, including the signage, um, or those stage shout outs, as we've been talking about, this will help you stay organized as much as possible on site. And if you have other key leaders on your event staff that are helping you, give them the same binder as well. So everyone has this information and it is possible to keep track of it. If anyone has ever watched Parks and Rec, uh, Leslie Nope is the master event planner and she plans for every scenario. Uh, and that's sort of how I think of it. Uh, and the last thing that I suggest that we've talked about this a couple of different times is networking at your event and to not only steward your sponsors and your volunteers, find your major donors as well. And another pro tip that I received here as well was putting some of those key names and faces into that event binder so your staff also knows who to look for and who to go uh, talk to at your event. So before we wrap up and we get into Q&A, I want to talk a little bit about QGIVs event management tools. So we've been talking about this throughout the, uh, the webinar itself and some things that we can help you with, but everything that we just talked about, QGIV can help you with. So uh, on the front end with accepting event registrations, uh, we can help you create uh, registrations online and create beautifully branding uh, event pages through our event registration tools. We also have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising as well as auction tools as well. So if you're whatever you're looking to do, we can help you here at QGive with those online fundraising tools. We also have ways for you to improve the engagement on site at your events. So as we were talking about earlier, we do have a virtual terminal and a mobile virtual terminal as well. That will help you quickly search, check in, check out, and add purchases or donations through that. And it is available in an app on a phone, or you can do it all online through a laptop. And again, it's easy to train your staff and volunteers, and we're always here to help you. We have unlimited support and training for a reason. We want to make sure that you are empowered to run your event smoothly. We also have the ability to accept uh, credit cards through our card readers. So we have a couple of different options uh, for you to use. And if you're interested, our sales team can walk through what those would look like. And we do have that table and seating management, as I mentioned before, to help you create that optimized event flow for on-site. 
And we also have other tools to help you engage your attendees at the event itself. So here you see our customizable fundraising thermometers uh, to show off your fundraising progress. And you can even live screencast to show off that thermometer, highlight donation activity, add your sponsors there as well. Anything that you need, you can do there. And if you want to raise more on site as well, you can use uh, our text fundraising to accept pledges and send any critical event updates to your attendees. So if you have any questions about our fundraising tools and you are a QGive customer, you can feel free to email us at support at QGive.com. I know that our team is always here to help you out and assist you. If you're interested in using QGive for any of the tools that we discussed today, you can go to request a demo at QGive.com slash demo request. Fill out that information. We'll be in touch to show off the platform to you. And if you have any other questions about best practices and any other tips that you're looking for, please visit us at QGive.com slash blog.